everyone. Welcome everyone. Jill here with and Jack here. Great. And, and Seth somewhere, but and not yet. Seth Williams is here. I see him typing. We are so happy that you are here with us, and we're so happy that Seth is here with us today. We're going to talk about having a tiny little baby in the house more than land today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's Seth. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Yeah, Seth, how are you, bud? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Great. Good. I've got a little bit of a cold today, so if I sound weird, that's why. That's my excuse. <laughs> Couldn't be lack of sleep with uh, all the stuff going on in your home, is it? <laughs> Could be part of that, too. I don't know. <laughs> Something. It. What's it like? Did you forget how to have a baby? Um, <laughs> you know, the first, the first baby we had was a total nightmare. I mean, it was like... <laughs> My, my wife was in labor for like literally four days. She oh, had no. failure to progress and it was just, it was a bad experience. And this time we just did a, a plan. <laughs> this is classic Michigan stuff right here. <laughs> yeah. So it was, uh, it was pretty easy, honestly. We just did the surgery thing and it was done. So. Well, you know what? It sounds like she had, the only thing she could do was go up from there. So anything yeah. would be better. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we aimed really low our first time. So. <laughs> You know, it's like your first land deal. You got to screw some stuff up. Yeah, exactly. It only gets better, right? <laughs> That's right. Maybe by the eighth kid, you'll have this down. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah maybe. We'll see. Our number one kid still messed up today. Yeah. That's oh, true. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It does. <laughs> Uh, well, we are so happy and excited to have you, and and uh, we don't really have a formal agenda today, so because we thought it'd be fun just to kind of see where see where this goes. We want to hear what you have going I have on. An, and, I have an agenda. Oh, oh well. Uh oh, <laughs> does it have to do with the call? <laughs> no, you know what it is, Seth. Here's my agenda. What's that? The way you started in this land business is not how you are right now. You know, I remember probably a year and a half ago, you and I spoke, and you said, you know. My business model is not really to do a million deals a minute. It's really mm -hmm. to do one or two, uh, maybe one a month, mm -hmm. and net ten grand out of each deal, and work for the government forever. You know, and I'm obviously <laughs> paraphrasing. And now you're like doing a hundred deals a minute, <laughs> and you don't work for the government, and you have more kids than now than then. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's really. I mean, my whole my whole model, I guess, is to not be totally dependent on any one business. So that's why I've got a few different things going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, really the latest thing that I've been doing with, with the land business is really what you guys have been kind of teaching all along is the whole blind offer thing through a, a list service like that. But as you know, I, I had started doing the delinquent tax list when I got started. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there's some validity to that and there's some pros and cons that come with it. But, you know, I've been hearing about everybody doing these blind offers and it's like, well, I got to get my feet wet more with this and be more familiar with it. So I've been doing that for the past several months and it's been interesting. I mean, at first it, it didn't go great, but I've kind of found my groove and it's going really, really well now. Like there's like more deals than I really have room to handle, which is really cool. So... How many deals are you doing, bud? Um, right now, I've got like eight of them in the hopper, from, and that was from one blind offer campaign. That's awesome. Like, like 900 letters that I sent out. So That's 10%, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, 1%. That's great. You know what, Seth, that was, we're, as you're talking and we're, we're just looking at each other, we're going to hook you up. Yeah. You, you, if you want. If you want. <laughs> Wait till you see what we got that we can help you with with cool. with your data and, and and mailers and everything. So, we're um, I'm looking at my producer right now, so I can so she can um, later on today or tomorrow she'll get you all passwords cool. and logged in, so you can see what we got going on. That'll yeah. really really help. Gonna, you out. We would love for you to be an honorary member uh -huh. for the data access and everything else. Whoa, that'd be sweet. Uh -huh. It's like oh, you, uh, you guys. It's the Hollywood hard. version of you know. We're gonna give you an honorary PhD. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and you don't have to pay or anything. I'll take it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, let's just don't turn out like Bill Cosby. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> but I think it's really cool what you guys are doing. Man. There's so many like websites and products and services you're bringing in the market. It's like I, I don't know how you do it all, but it's uh, it's really cool to be just this uh, a shop that offers so many things to land investors. 
you know, we take the approach to rolling out these products the way that, you know, I think most people should do their first land deal. We just really mess it up before it gets launched and then fix it as you go. Mm -hmm. Sure. And eventually you end up with something that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And we all listen. We all work together really well. And a lot of our products are because our, our folks keep saying, you know, we need help with X. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Jack and I go, all right, we're going to figure this out. (laughs) It's all driven based on what they request. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Yeah, So, I mean, things have, I've just been hearing about, you got land pin, you've got Jill live, you've got Mm -hmm. landinvestors.com, you've got deed perfect. Um, I'm probably hitting like 1% of what you're doing. I'm going to put them up on the screen while you're talking. Is there like a top three that you like, are putting most of your time into at this point or like what's the you have like a priority list or you just sort of doing it all at the same time like how do you it's out? organized chaos around here is really <laughs> what it is <laughs> if you can see the screen uh oh, land yeah, pins live yeah. land academy land academy we all know about parcel mm-hmm. fact um i'm gonna do a demo here in a little while it, it essentially allows you i did a short one last uh last week but it allows you to find uh any property well, there's 148 million properties in the database so that's pretty amazing county wise uh you know the the front of it is the county wise is a, a the comprehensive resource on the internet to find anything that's going on in that county whether it's tax sales or anything else uh let's see crowd land crowdfund is uh i'm working with a bunch of people that are really interested in never sending a mailer out but getting involved from a partnership standpoint on a deal by deal basis so our members will be allowed to post a property the same way we post it on LandPen, um, and get you know find a partner that'll fund the whole thing and split the pr- profit. Mm-hmm. Cool. Jack Jill is just our, our silly podcast. Parcel Split is a comprehensive re- resource to subdivide property on a county by county basis. Mm-hmm. Offers to owners is. Uh, Includes a ton of. Are you bored yet, Jill? No, no. That's that's yeah. That's offered to owners is, and we're really close to launching this probably within days, mm-hmm. like uh, two weeks. Access to RealQuest Pro, Title Twenty Four Seven, Title Pro, mm-hmm. the spatial thing that mm-hmm. what we just talked about, parcel and mailer facts, discount, and then the letter stream mailer at forty nine cents mm-hmm. a unit. So that's for people who have done a few deals already. They don't really want to be involved in Land Academy. They don't need it. They just, uh, you know, they're involved in, they've already done some deals. Mm-hmm. Land Investors is the head of the monster, and that's actually where Success Plant will be hosted shortly here. Um, so it's, it's primarily the forum. Are you, you're familiar with Success Plant, right, Seth? Oh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Offers Academy will uh, probably realistically launch in 2018, where it's a different database set. But you can buy, it's the same concept. I've, I've proven it over and over. You can buy cars and boats and aircraft this way. Tax sale form and back tax lists will, um, is with intent, put out, uh, put, what's the name of that site that we d- dislike? That I talk about the program all the time. Those guys are, don't, they don't cut. That you know? tax sale list that kind of mm-hmm. or something? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, tax sales. E tax sales. Yeah. sales and tax sales. If them. we do this properly, we'll be out of business within a couple months. They will be. Yeah. <laughs> Not we. And then Title Mine is um, <laughs> the, the shop for Title Mine, and I'm interviewing title companies right now where you can literally type in the, the property that you want to purchase, and it will be assigned to a title agent anywhere in the country and for an extremely deep de- discounted. You know, we're, we're looking at three or 400 bucks to get a whole escrow slash title policy completely done. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to take all the BS out of this, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's getting a pretty good response. It's going to be all automated someday. It's just going to be <laughs> pick a county and a parcel size and then everything else just happens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll get, ever get to be that point, but it'd be cool. So I, I'm curious, are you guys like, like, are you outsourcing this stuff to contractors or do you have employees working on all this? Because, like, I look at one of those things and it's like, man, that would be a ton of work to do that. Like, well, how thank, do you organize all that? Thank you for asking that. We have uh, several IT people on staff that are using IT people all over the world to develop okay. this stuff. And uh, some of it goes really well and quickly and some of it doesn't, like mm-hmm. everything, I guess. Sure. But yeah, we want to be... You know, we would like to be the land resource for, for any type of land, whether it's, uh, you know, Toll Brothers buying property, farm property to subdivide and, and uh, build houses or anything. Anybody who's involved in the land business. Sure. Mm-hmm. Cool. 
it's it's crazy but yeah most of it is it's really us seth and i look at i i do i look at us some days and i'm like we must be crazy (laughs) you know like even like today what we we just did a, a awesome meetup we had so much fun got to meet a lot of our our people last night so we came off of that and of course we went out and celebrated a little bit last night so we wake up this morning you know you hit the ground running and here we are you know quickly promoting today and showing up on a call and as soon as we're off we're gonna divide and conquer and get some more stuff done but it's mm-hmm. it's really fun. Jill just got up like a half hour I ago. I did not. <laughs> <You're so silly. laughs> I wish. So tell us about these deals you're doing these these eight deals. What, yeah. what do they look like? Are they similar? Yeah well I you know I, I like to go after the the bigger fish and so I, I was looking specifically for properties between like 10 and 20 acres um, and so I've just been mailing to a couple specific counties, uh, which will not be named here. Right. <laughs> I'm looking at a couple of counties and um, just gotten tons of results from one in particular. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I just got lucky or something, but um, it's just been really great. It's, it's nice because every, you know, what I was sort of used to, because I've done this for years, was I was getting a lot of leads coming in through my website. And that was really nice because it was free, um, but it was also less nice because I couldn't really choose who would, you know, what kinds of properties were going to come in the door. And with this, uh, you know, with the way that you guys sort lists and the way that I'm doing it now, it's, it's uh, really nice that you can just specify exactly, you know, to a T, the kinds of properties you want coming through the door. So mm-hmm. everybody that contacts me is exactly the kind of property I want. And um, occasionally there's little things that kind of throw a wrench into it, but usually it ends up uh, going through. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nice cause I can, they're big enough that I can justify using a title company and I don't have to get my hands dirty with all that. And um, yeah, it's, it's just big town, like 20, even 30 acre properties. I think. This are you, are you doing most of this? Um, I mean yourself or have you, have you hired some help yet? Um, I'm doing, all the direct mail and stuff myself. I'm, mm-hmm. I've not hired anybody, but I, I think I need to mainly on yeah. the selling end because I just don't have time to deal with tire kickers and that kind of thing. So right. Well, what out of curiosity, as I'm because I'm right now, you know, creating Jill Live, and I'm I did a poll. I'm trying to figure out what what's everyone's biggest issues so far. Yeah. It's home, yeah, it's survey. phones and pro- properties. What mm-hmm. what's your big hang up? <laughs> what could you use help with? I'm just curious. What's your mental problem? I, know yeah. <laughs> I, I think for me, it's sort of like, it's like a, a personal problem of mine. Like Jill, I, I, sort of, I sort of get the, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I kind of get the vibe that like, you're really good on the phone and you're really good at talking to people and you can deal with people's stupid questions all day long and that doesn't bother you, but Correct. For me, I, I just get fatigued with that. Like it I just, can't take it either. It, um, yeah, I think I, I agree. I'm just, there's only so much of that I can take. And especially just given all the flaky people out there who say yeah. they're going to do one thing and then they don't do it. And it just right. bothers me. And I, I don't have the energy to do that. And I can, but I don't want to. So for me, it would be getting somebody to help, you know, just posting properties, handling the calls that come in and just facilitating that so I don't have to. Cool. Thank you. Super cool. Is that, is that, is Jill live more for like handling the calls from sellers that come in or is that for the sales side of things? I'm, you know what, as I'm, as I'm just, I'm putting it all together right now, I'm, I'm adding more to what we're going to provide. And like one of them is I have a a professional writer in my back pocket Mm -hmm. who just started working for me and doing stuff. And, and she actually came to me and said, Hey, I'm looking on land pin at some of these guys, you know, descriptions. I could do this so much better. I'm like, okay, hold on there. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at all kinds of things, inbound phone for sellers and buyers, maybe doing rolling that in and doing some of the property postings and writing some descriptions. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what I'm kind of trying to see where everybody, what what the top things are everybody needs now. And I'll try to tackle those first and then I'll, I'll roll in some other things later if anybody needs help with just, you know, getting the deeds done or setting up a notary and that kind of stuff. I can roll that in later. Sure. We're really trying to, engineering is a big gripe for a lot of people. And, you know, when I say that, I mean posting properties. So Landpin on the back end is being, we're developing a module right now. So you, you enter in all the stuff 
from Landpin that you can. So you have a regular posting, and then you hit a button, and it goes everywhere else. It goes to Zillow, Trulia, Landwatch, Land and Farm, and the whole thing. We're yeah, really just trying to make this the mundane stuff a lot easier. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. That's that's huge. You know, there's no replacement for pricing a mailer, and mm-hmm. I think that that's just something that I mean, I've I've literally sat down and tried to write algorithms based on completed sales and stuff, and it just you just have to feel it, feel it. There's some math, but you have to feel it too. So I wanted to ask you how you price mailers. Well, I've, uh, there's a couple of different ways. Um, there's actually, <laughs> I was just trying to nail down pricing it based on assessed values a little bit because I kind of had a vague idea, but you know, I wasn't really that clear on it. So I, you know, I basically put together, or I, I download the spreadsheet and, um, with with real uh, real quest pro i know it shows the assessed value of each property but does it show like the actual total market value too yeah mm-hmm. it does okay but um, you're at the you're at the mercy of the county that's supplying the data and some of them are real strong and some of them aren't mm-hmm. yeah um, yeah i totally agree with that and i um, i basically you know i've been looking at the total market value and doing offers somewhere around like five to 15% of that number, which may or may not be, you know, accurate. But that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, is that, what do you guys do? Do you do, you do the assessed value first or do you get more specific than that? Or We don't that? price off of assessed value. I don't even look at it. Okay. What we do is we take listed property mm-hmm. uh, from more than one source. So let's just say land and farm, maybe land pin and maybe land watch. And we look at, the lowest, second to lowest, or third lowest priced property that's out there. Mm-hmm. This is in lieu of not having completed sales, and we're solving that too. So if you just have to go on it like I'm talking about here, then we we try to, our target purchase price then becomes half of that. So if a property in Northern Arizona is the bottom two or three properties is around five grand, we mm-hmm. want to buy it for 2,500. So we go in even lower than that, mm-hmm. maybe half of that. Mm-hmm. So try to come in at around 20 to 30% of what we think the retail price is. Sure. Okay. Cause we hold, we're wholesalers, you know, I, we want to sell it to somebody who's going to make more money than us. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. whole model. Mm-hmm. So in that, that model works everywhere, like in, in every market, like even the really expensive ones, or is that something that just works on like the lower end markets? We're, you know, we're doing deals based on this exact model in Santa Barbara County which is extremely high end, like movie star ranches, you know, mm-hmm. for upwards to a million bucks, and it's working great. Sure. From cool. a percentage standpoint, it's working better than desert property. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then there's way bigger bang for the each deal. Mm-hmm. Bigger, you know, dollar bang. Yeah, absolutely. Dollar bang. Dollar bang. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> He's going to create a new company around that. <laughs> hey, have you no, guys but, ever worked in, in Iowa by any chance, just out of curiosity? Yeah, you know, that's farmland. So, and there's a whole different approach to that because my, in my opinion, we know some people from Iowa actually really well. And mm-hmm. if you, I, every time I see there are snowbirds that come into town, mm-hmm. every time I see them, I'm like, well, you know, what, what's an acre going for farmland now? And they have a real specific answer, you yeah. know, and they're not even farmers. They're not in the industry. So everybody talks about it. So yeah. buying yeah. farmland is harder, but, and I have not ever done it. Mm-hmm. But the guys that tell me it, you just got to go in around eighty percent instead of yeah. twenty or thirty, and you can sure. usually pick up some property. Yeah, I've I've got a cousin in uh, who's a farmer in uh, near Iowa near the South Dakota border, and same kind of thing where he's just like, "Yep, it is exactly this amount for farmland." And, and you know, being a farmer, he actually wants to buy land, and he wants me to buy land with him. And I, I just keep thinking, you know, is there a way to get cheap farmland? But it, seems like in that kind of market, like, you know, prime farmland, like really in the world, it would be pretty hard to, Yeah, I mean, it's almost kind of like, you know, going into Manhattan or something and trying to get stuff for cheap there. It's just like, right, right. this doesn't work that way. I don't know, but it just seems like that. I backed into the economics of the crop yield on, on an acre of prop, uh, acre of farmland. Mm-hmm. And it's like, as a business model, like we're all used to doubling our money. Sometimes you know, and I'm sure you hear this too, people get upset that they only doubled their money. Mm-hmm. Um, with farmland, I mean, you may, the return on investment is silly. It's like 1% a year. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. as a business, farming really is, unless you're Monsanto, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Isn't it Usually, some of it who I'm you sorry, know too in, the, in farmland? I thought some of it you gotta, you know, yeah. it's like a old boys 
group. I think there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. That's right. I think fun. they're, they're, they're used to auctions. So I think our farmland gets auctioned off that way. Mm -hmm. They want to keep it in the, in the state mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so in the family. There's a lot of things going on versus vacation property and ranches and what we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. But try it out, Seth, and uh, be our guinea pig, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You can see. laughs> Do you guys know, did, or um, Jackie, I mean, being a data guy, have you ever heard of anything similar to CoreLogic in Canada? Or, or really, for that matter, any other country in the world? Like, is there, are there does, like, does CoreLogic work in, the, in any other countries? Or is there an equivalent? Like, say, if I wanted to try to do this in... England or something like that. I mean, is that doable? Yeah, Jill and I just met with uh, like the number three or four guy at CoreLogic like mm -hmm. two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so for the regular people on the call or, or the people that listen to our show, they've already heard this, but they, uh, so their, their main clients or customers are insurance companies mm -hmm. and oil, oil uh, companies. They use, they use data in, a, in an intense way. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're, they go into countries where that, that stuff's prevalent. They, uh, they're full blown. will be releasing products in Australia and New Zealand cool. and Canada. They have no plans at all, but I've tapped the source, you know, everything's consolidated in Canada. So mm -hmm. there is a source of data in a database where that's all set up to look up, to look up one or two or three or five properties. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking, you know, I haven't gotten very far, but I've been talking to the, the people who run that database to see if we can access it with the way that we access core logic or real quest. And, mm -hmm. uh, I have not gotten far yet, mostly because of what's on the screen right now. Cause I've, I'm sure putting time toward that, but Canada's yeah. coming. Let me put it that way. Cool. Awesome. The provinces don't have the power that the counties and the states seem to have here over like taxing authority stuff. It, it all seems to be really federal government up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. you're North, you're in Grand Rapids. You're a little North of Canada right now too, right? Yeah, I mean, if I was to go like directly east, I think I would hit Canada. Um, yeah, it's it's not far from here at all. Mm -hmm. Can you speak? To, like, I mean, can so you speak much. Canadian? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> People tell me I have a Canadian accent. <laughs> really? Huh. My sister lives in Traverse City, and it's like talking to somebody from Toronto. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask you, Jack. You don't have any brothers, do you? No. Okay. Because there's this guy at the gym <laughs> that I see every so often. <laughs> like, he looks just like you. Like, he looks like you, maybe like 15 years older. And it's like, man, that guy's got to be related to that. It's <laughs> like, hilarious. But it's, I mean, it's my whole funny. family, both sides are from that area. So that's probably, it's possible that there's a gene pool mix there. <laughs> 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 this is kind of fun not talking about land on this call that we're supposed to be talking about. I like oh, them. This is much better. We are <laughs> still forgot why we were here. <laughs> okay, let's take some questions. This is better. I want to hear what Seth's going to answer on some of these questions. All right. Can you take yes. this one, Jill, that just popped in box or Craig to everyone? All right. I'll read Craig's here. Hi, everyone. I have a property left over from my first mailer. It's currently landlocked. Haven't determined access yet. It's five acres and beautiful mountain views. But you have to hop a fence and walk across private property to get there right now. I don't need to do anything with it right now. It's in a weed friendly state. Oh, okay, got an idea there. And some locals are interested in growing on it. I'd lease it to them for a percentage of revenue. Or I can just try to sell it for one to 2000 and move on. Does this sound like, I'm guessing, a good idea? Sound like a worthwhile trying to try, or a worthwhile thing to try, or would you do the same? Seth, can you answer? Would you like to answer? You know, I missed that first sentence because I was looking at this chat box. What I caught was that he's got a lead on a landlocked parcel in a weed-friendly state, and he's not yep. sure mm -hmm. whether to buy it. Is that the idea? Five acres, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't know. I've, I've done some pretty good landlocked deals before. Me okay. too. It really doesn't mean anything bad to me as long as I can get it for cheap enough. Um, so, I mean, I... It just kind of depends on you know how low of a price I could get on it. I'd probably pursue it, at least send the offer. Um, but is it, would you guys say the same, or what would you do? I would uh, absolutely pursue it, and but not veer from our business model. So, and part of the question that th that Craig asked is, would you take a percentage of revenue, or would you just try to oh. sell it? And uh, this revenue sharing thing, I, I'm not into that. Yeah, I wouldn't be either. It's too much stuff to monkey with. I think. 
Right. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. I would buy the property. I would run that property through all the tests of normal or, or normal business model. And if it passes them, I would sell it for one or 2000 bucks and then move on. Sure. Mm -hmm. Good. Next Good yeah, I called him. Michael, Michael Elon wrote, it doesn't make sense to buy title insurance when flipping because the policy is only good for as long as you own the property, right? When would you want to buy title insurance? Only when selling on terms? I, you, I, you know what, Seth, can you answer that? Let's, let's have Seth be the first answerer of all these. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he, unless he doesn't want to. Well, we you just say you, pass. You're an honorary, honorary member of uh, Land Academy now, Seth, so. Yeah, I sweet. Think you have you're obligated. Initiation okay. by fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of title insurance is that um, it basically protects you. If there was some, you know, some cloud on the title that you didn't catch, and then you signed a warranty deed over to somebody else. So it's like, uh, you know, even if there was, like, there could be an issue that comes up after you don't own it anymore, and they could potentially come back to you if you were the one that promise something you could deliver and then that's when title insurance would kick in and save your butt is that right that's exactly my understanding yeah okay and i like it even though you know what when i'm posting property and i put in there that we acquired it with title insurance everybody just kind of goes oh okay mm -hmm. they breathe a little bit and we'll even post in the in the posting you know the policy a link to the policy so they can go see it and know yeah. that we did our due diligence and then it's, so it's i think we get more out of the property sometimes get a little bit of a higher price because of that i agree with you joe i was going to say that it's not often that we agree by the way <laughs> you know now with seth on the call we have a third person to disagree with there we go <laughs> <laughs> or he'll pick sides and win. <laughs> no i think uh, you're you're dead right both of you actually it really serves as a marketing tool especially if you connect the pdf with the Right with the deal, right with the Ooh. posting. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I've actually never thought about that. Using it as a marketing tool, but that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. I, yeah. I usually kind of thought of it as, um, you know, especially like the more expensive a property gets, the higher likelihood a title company is going to get involved and somebody's going to want title insurance and all that. So there's more money on the line. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I know that potential need is coming down the road, I can kind of like make double sure it's going to be fine if I get title insurance when I buy it. Um, but it's, for me, it kind of comes down to the, you know, the market value of the property. It's like, if it's, if it's a really cheap one, I usually don't bother with it. And if it's a more pricey one, then I will. And it's almost sort of a, like I almost what, what I like more <laughs> is just having a title company do it. So I don't have to monkey around with the paperwork and the logistics of all of it. And just the time it frees up for me and, and knowing that, you know, this person's going to be doing it right is a really nice benefit. Right. If you get the right title agent, you know, half the work in this is closing these deals. So if you get the right title person, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have them on our staff, former mm -hmm. title people. But if you get the right title agent going, I mean, for years, they can close deals for you in two weeks because these are the easy, title agents love these types of deals. There's no, no real estate agent to bark at them mm -hmm. and there's no lender, you know, saying that they're doing stuff wrong. So mm -hmm. without a lender and just two people to deal with. And if you go the extra step and collect all the docs from the seller, like you do anyway, they mm -hmm. love it. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, Jason wrote, I'm buying a property in a trust where the settlers of a seller uh, have passed away. The son and the daughter, the sellers, the sellers, <laughs> the son and daughter are co-trustees and are alive and able to sign the new deed. Do you recommend having an attorney look at the trust document to make sure the co-trustees have the legal right to, to sell? To sell. Okay. Am I answering this first? Yeah, Seth, you're first. What would you do? Well, um, I worked a little bit with trusts when I was in banking, so I, I sort of understand it. I wouldn't say 100%, but like 80%. Um, so, I, you know, I can get reasonably comfortable with that, but the average person, I would not expect to really know that. Um, mm -hmm. Trust documentation can get really weird, especially if you get like amendments to it and um, state specific and county specific issues. And it's just, um, I, I would say like if I was talking to anybody who was either new to the business or they're not a, you know, closing specialist, I'd say probably to get a, you know, title company or attorney to take a look at it. Um, I, I haven't always done that, but that's cause I sort of know more than the average person on that. So what would you guys do? 
I mean, you were a lender, uh, FHA lender, right? Uh, SBA actually. And it oh, was, that's right. Um, that's right. I, I didn't actually, I wasn't employed by the government, but they outsourced their work to us. So it was mm. kind of a quasi government thing. Okay. Um, yeah. We're pretty comfortable with them too. Cause we've been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I make sure that all the kind of like I'm doing my own due diligence on when I'm going back and, you know, researching title, I research this and make sure everything checks out and you better believe I have a copy of that document mm -hmm. too when I'm doing this whole thing. You know, I, this is how I explain it. There's, inst there's ended, there are entities out there that are, can legally own land. Uh, you know, and you start with an individual, they can own land or a married couple or three people as partners or an LLC and you keep moving up the chain and a trust is just an entity that's legally allowed to hold property. So if it cross checks, you cross check it the way that you cross check an LLC, make sure the person that's signing is, uh, you know, able to sign for the LLC and on and on. So trust themselves, I think are, I'm not afraid of them at all. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm not either. Let me go on. I'm go just ahead, kind Jim. of go down the list here. Yeah. Okay. Anwar wrote, um, I'm getting a great response from this one subdivision. I can buy like 11 properties all for one it says one acre. I wonder if he means one. The I don't know what it, all eleven properties all for one acre. I'm not sure. The lowest listed sale price is three thousand dollars. I have them in a contract for five hundred dollars. One of them, one of it's someone other people's students just sold one for eighteen hundred dollars. We make fun of Mark on the show sometimes, Seth. So. Is it Park Madalskis? <laughs> I'm concerned that my inventory will be all the same acreage in the same subdivision. Oh, okay. Can I overbuy, or did I hit? Can I answer this? Yeah, hit the jackpot. Because I mm -hmm. spoke with Anwar about, I'm not going to talk about the, the county at all, but I know that the deal that he's talking about, and what he's asking is, am I buying too many properties in one little area, area and will I be able to sell them, you know, in, versus having uh, one property in each state, 50 properties, one in each state kind of thing? And the answer is, no, I think it's a reasonable deal. I think you can buy... 20 years. Jill and I have purchased 1,100 properties in one county in one sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we sold them all pretty well, really well. So it's all about passing the regular tests. And uh, I know the subdivision that you're talking about, and I think you you should be running to the bank. You shouldn't be on this call. That's mm -hmm. how good this deal is, I think. Yeah, hang up now. <laughs> 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 Love it. Hey, Kathleen. Okay, when a parcel's landlocked, how do you answer direct questions from interested buyers about access? I spell it out exactly. I want to hear Seth's. Yeah. What do you say, Seth? I just lie to him. Just. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if I know it's landlocked, I'll just say, yeah, there's, there's no road access to it. And um, it, it sort of depends. Uh, I know some States, like I think Texas is one of them where, um, you know, the local government can basically force an easement through somebody else's property. I, Arizona I and California are like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've looked at doing that in Michigan and apparently that's not a thing in my state, which kind of stinks. But uh, if, if that's a possibility or not, it's something I definitely mention. Like I'm not going to do it and I haven't done it, but you have that option if you choose to buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, so like there is a potential solution. It's just not in place yet. But uh, it just kind of goes back to the importance of getting landlocked parcels for dirt cheap and sort of using that attribute in your favor. Because, you know, in some ways, if a property doesn't have legal access, might as well be on the moon, right? <laughs> so that's yeah. what you when you buy. But on the sell side, you just kind of, I thought I heard you say something really good, Jack. Maybe it was you, Jill. Just tell like, hey, if you want to get a property where you can just get lost and nobody will ever find you, this is the one. <laughs> like, I just, I love the way that's worded. It's perfect. Totally. I'm shocked at the number of people that specifically request it. Yeah. yeah. I've told people, do you have four-wheel drive and a GPS? And they're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you have I'm no like, okay. I, no idea. <laughs> people lift their cars up really high sometimes. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. I've had interest. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of those things that I've learned. I was just sharing with some people last night. I stopped, you know, assuming or guessing what I think people want because just because it doesn't appeal to me doesn't mean there's somebody out there that doesn't love it. Mm -hmm. And it's, you just got to reach, reach that person. And it's yeah. awesome. All right. This is a good one. This is kind of for you, Seth. 
Steven sure. says, Seth has an article about perk tests. Well, we're going to, yes, he's asking us, but I want to ask you, what <laughs> do Jack and Jill think about this? And if you're doing, if you're doing some residential lots as compared to resident, as compared to recreational property? I mean, I'd love to hear Seth's answer on this. Perking, we don't perk anything out here, mm -hmm. but because I'm from Michigan, I know what it is. So do you perk test anything ever, Seth? Um, I have on one occasion. Um, it was a really high-end property I was getting, putting a decent amount of money into it. And so I did in that case. Um, but usually, no. Usually what I would look at is, you know, the properties in the immediate vicinity, That's like are I there mean. houses yeah. there? Because if exactly. there are, those exactly perks how are, I would answer this question. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I mean, there are other less practical ways to get the answers or get really good indications without actually ordering a perk test. But um, usually just really high level indicators like, you know, looking at houses nearby are a pretty good, good way to do it. Or um, I know like, like you were saying, Jack, there's places out West where this is just a non-issue, but it can be a huge issue in Michigan and probably I would assume other places like Florida and yeah. um, places with lots, lots of lakes like Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, I think some counties are almost more renowned for that than others. So if you kind of know it's an issue in a certain area, that can kind of be on your radar as well. Yeah, if you've lived, I mean, especially out west, if you've lived in any one state, I can tell you pretty much just by barroom conversation where there's water in the state and where there isn't. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot from barroom conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's like three or four or 15 derogatory things that I just was went through my waiting. mind. <laughs> I'm waiting. It's not just our closed group this today. It's This is oh, open to the public. So. That's true. The FBI is probably on the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, Kyler said... Uh, I'm going to file for an LLC next week. My LLC will be a different name for my domain, my domain and my land website. That's cool. I've already checked with the Secretary of State, and I know which of my preferred names are available, but only a couple of them also have a domain available. Do I need to own the domain of my LLC name, or does that even matter? It doesn't matter one bit. Mm -hmm. I, uh, in fact, there's arguments on both sides to uh, you know, to name your LLC and the name of your company the same, or to not, and that completely make it a different name. So, you know, it's per personal preference. I I kind of lean toward uh, having an operating company with the same name, and then having another LLC, which is kind of a back end asset holding company, with a completely and entirely different name. Mm -hmm. And I've always we've, we're a two and three LLC family over here. We don't ever put all the assets or the eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Per person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, per person. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Seth? Yeah, I, I would agree. I know um, like one example might be um, if you've heard of the, the website ITI Direct Mail, um, their domain is letterprinting.net. So it's yeah. like. It's not, it's not the same. Um, and if, if you really were concerned about that, you could always file a, a DBA for your LLC just to right. catch that other name too. But yeah, I don't think it really matters. Have you had any legal, just for fun, I mean, you've done been doing this for a while. Have you had any, any real legal issues with buyers or sellers? Um, like in terms of you sold me something and you didn't tell me about this or something like that. Exactly or, those terms. No, I've never had that. I haven't either. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually. Times, I just refund their money if they're upset about anything. I don't do it ten years later, but if they're upset mm -hmm. about anything, we just or they have buyer's remorse, we just say, "Yeah." We'll I've had my wife flipped out. Yeah, <laughs> I've had that one. <laughs> yeah, you just refund them. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I was something. That was something I was pretty worried about when I was getting started. Like I was, I don't know. I just I fretted a lot about that kind of thing, and it was apparently all in vain because hasn't really been an issue for me. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Kiria asked, it says, Seth, I follow your video tutorials to set up my website and I really appreciate the help. What is the best company to use to accept payment through my website? This will be good to see who Seth uses. Yeah, the one that uh, I've been using as of late is called Blue Pay. Um, and that's, uh, <clears throat> I actually found out about it through the forum that I run and it's, um, 
man, I actually spent a ton of time last year trying to nail down, you know, who is the best option for this. And it was, it was hard because when I was really digging into the details, like all of these companies disallow real estate transactions and whether, whether or not they actually, you know, enforce that, I don't know, but it's in their fine print when you read through it. And it was like driving me crazy. <laughs> and so, um, but, but blue pay was one. I, I got very, very specific with that and went back and forth repeatedly. I got it in writing and they said, yep, you can use this for real estate, whether it's That's great seller finance deal or a full payment or an earnest deposit or assignment fee or any of that. It's all good. So that's the one I'm using right now. How much does the time does it take you to do one blog, like from research and the whole thing? Because everybody I talk to, like there's a reason we do an audio, we do a podcast and not a blog because there's no way I could ever write a better blog than you. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it just depends on the, uh, on the subject and how, in depth I'm trying to be. Um, I've had them take anywhere from a few hours to like 60 hours for one blog post. Um, especially when you're like making videos and putting those in there too, it, it chews up a lot of time. But right. I, part of what I think is so cool about it is, you know, I can, I can explain it really well once and then it's like infinitely scalable. Like it can help thousands of people, which is sort of a different dynamic than like, one-on-one -on -one mentoring where it's like, I can only help this one person one at a time. Um, I, I like the efficiency aspect of being able to help lots of people. So. Yeah. It's, publishing is just one of the greatest businesses ever. You do it once and then you can just replicate it forever. Yeah. And like you said, reach and help. Yeah, definitely. Works the other way too. If you're, if you're evil, you know, you can spread a lot of badness too pretty easily. Yeah, did, for sure. Where did that come from? <laughs> no, it's like like the people who hold uh, free seminars in, in the oh, lobby of the Hilton. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or just, yeah. Or a I bad know. infomercial. Right. There's no shortage of those at all in real estate. I'd yeah. like to know who's the person who's walking around telling people to send, like, instead of a nice, respectable offer, send those letters. I'm sure you've got them too, Seth. Anybody who owns property and you're, you, you know, it's really easy to get behind on the taxes and it's not a big deal. And you get all this mail and some of them I get, I get so angry because there's some little old lady somewhere that opened it up and is crying because she thinks someone is going to come knock on her door and, yeah. and garnish it's her not, not cool. stuff because she's not paying the property taxes, which is not true. Yep. So those make me, yeah. I don't know who's doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Jason Mayfield asks, is there any difference in pricing the mailer if you want to start out optioning properties versus cash deals? Who wants to who wants to address that first? I don't. When I'm doing direct mail, my goal is not to do options. Like that's not what I'm going for. So I I always price it as if I'm going to buy it. Um, so I, I mean, usually if I ever go an option or an assignment route, it would be like an afterthought. Like, okay, my offer didn't work for you, but this number does. Okay, let's redo this agreement and mark it up and go from there. So in terms of like. Tired the direct mail part. I just don't even consider that. I'm getting tired of agreeing with you. <laughs> That's exactly. How are we going to argue at all, Seth, if we all agree on everything? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I do, That's Seth. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> yeah. And it's sometimes I, I'll often pass. If it's, it's got to be still, still got to be a really, really good property because I don't want to have 18 option agreements out there. It doesn't do, do a lot of good, but. That's what we're, that's why we're going to, we're starting land crowdfund because I would like to do away with the options entirely. Mm -hmm. and just have it if it's good enough to deal is good enough to do just do it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i got a friend of mine um i've actually known her for since 2008 we both kind of started doing land at the same time and she has sort of moved to like focusing specifically on doing assignment deals like not buying anything but just getting purchase agreements and assigning them and uh last time i talked to her about it i think she said so at least half of the deals just die or the people flake out and don't follow through. So it's like, you're really marketing, you know, putting a lot of effort into finding buyers for these properties with the knowledge that half of your efforts are going to be completely wasted. And I mean, I guess the upside is you don't have to put any money into it, but it's kind of a lot of uh, wasted time and energy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's worth doing, then, then do it, you know? Yeah. Okay. It's so easy to find money too. It's just a matter. That's what this website's supposed to do. To connect to people that really want to lend the money and, and everybody who's got the deals, which, which is what we're all here for, 
mm -hmm. put it in the same format so the person with money can look at 25, 30, or 40 deals and say, I want these three, mm -hmm. or I like this guy's style. I'm going to do more deals with him, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, which, let's see. Okay. Uh, Luke Smith said or asked, you guys ever do any homestead education to help sell properties? I'm thinking water catchment in the desert and or potable water delivery or more information about the local RV slash small yeah. home zoning info, mm -hmm. building info, building permit info, et cetera. What do you think is the most valuable information I can present is? Is this their sell property or just kind of a, a information to sort of sell property? Knowing Luke, Luke yes, it's Luke Smith. Yeah, he said I mean, to sell land, yeah. I think Seth and, and, and us, Land Academy, are kind of in that, in that business. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about stuff. You, Seth writes blogs about topics that are related to land. And in the end, sells, probably sells prop, property because of it. And we sort of do that too. So I think that any of those topics, uh, yeah. except for homesteading, I, I don't, I'd love to know Seth's opinion on this. I don't think that there's any such thing as homesteading at all, anywhere, no matter who says it. Yeah, I mean, to uh, just to make sure I understand that, right? Is this like putting together like a PDF report or something, just like touching on certain topics where it's relevant? Like, I guess, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I've not done anything like that, um, not that specifically. Um, so I, you know, I could see how it may be, like if you know a market particularly well and you know that there's a particular type of buyer that is always there, always looking for this kind of land for a certain use, and you're going to be in that market, you know, for years to come. And yeah, it could make sense to do that. Um, yeah, that I guess be your niche. Yeah, H having not done that specific thing, I don't, I don't really know for sure if it's worth it or not. But um, I mean, for me, it would probably be one of the things that's lower on my list. Like I wouldn't invest a ton of time and effort into that, but um, it could be something worthwhile. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think everybody's got their thing. For some reason, it's easy for I, Jill and I to kick out five shows, five uh, audio shows. And I guess it's now video. For some reason, it's just natural for us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, for me to write a detailed blog, like it's a, a dissertation for a PhD, like you do every single week, is uh, that's hard. So yeah. whatever comes easy, easiest to you to, uh, to participate in that kind of thing, I think is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good answer. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. Jules has a saying. She's been saying it since I met her. If it's, if it's re whatever you're doing, if it's really, really hard, stop doing it. <laughs> it's not, you're not supposed to do that. Whatever you, to be successful at anything, it should be kind of fun and easy. So, and I don't, I think it's maybe a Southern California girl coming out, but <laughs> a little bit of it, but it's not that far off, especially when you get older. It's like, I don't, yeah. you know, in Michigan, it's like, there's this contest. Whoever suffers the most wins, you know, you know what I mean, Seth? Well, old you, people sit around our say, horrible economy or what I expect for that. <laughs> uh -huh. My point is people kind of think that the, if, it's, if it's something comes natural to me and it really is easy, they think I must be doing it wrong. I'm like, no, no, no. That means you found something good that you're really good at and you need to run with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why you don't get, you don't get an award for sitting at your desk 10 hours a day, mm -hmm. you know, trying to learn something that, you know, maybe you, you probably should have hired somebody at this point for mm -hmm. that task. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think it's uh, it's kind of a mix, you know, I, like I really, really, really love what I'm doing right now. Like I, I cannot wait for the work day to start. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. I've never, I've never enjoyed what I'm doing so much, but um, so yeah, I, I totally get that. And I, I know I'm doing the right thing because I love it so much, but at the same time, it's like, there's still really hard stuff. Like it's, I think the difference is I sort of have the stamina to get through it now. Like I, I get why it's still important and why I do it anyway. So it doesn't necessarily mean like the difficult things won't happen. It's just, uh, it's like, how able are you to cope with that and push through? Cause if it's just like knocking you out then maybe it really is the wrong thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Do you have a, do you work at home? I do. Yeah. Wait till the kids start walking. <laughs> it's, it's, that's hard, man. I, I'm, I'm in the basement here and <laughs> I hear just screaming and pounding upstairs all day long and, well, it's not actually that bad, but I can imagine it will get much worse when there are a few. <laughs> it's going to have to soundproof it and put a padlock on there. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they stick him in the basement. That's hilarious. <laughs> he's a breadwinner and he's got to sit in the basement. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. a nice basement. 
Do you guys like Skype throughout the house or how do you get or do you text message throughout the house? No, no we do texting usually. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just so hard to open the door and speak with my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We do that. Oh, that's so good. All right. Um, this is a good question. Uh, Michael Elon asks, Seth or Jack or Jill, um, do you typically remove LLCs, corps, partnerships, et cetera, when scrubbing your list? Go ahead, Seth. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I will tell you, to be honest, I do right now when I'm doing my lists. And it's mainly because um, there's just, there's usually well, you know, well in excess of what I actually want to send out is available. So it's like, because I have, you know, more leads here than I can even work with, let's just get rid of the ones that are going to add a little wrinkle where I have to get extra documentation or figure out trust stuff. So I am currently doing that, but I haven't always been that way. Um, and I, I don't even think that's necessarily the right answer for you because um, they can be done and there can be awesome opportunities there. But currently I am taking them out. Yes. Hmm. Finally, we'll take we, those. Finally, we disagree. <laughs> I was waiting for us to disagree. Yeah, How's it feel? You're wrong, guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we've had, well, it's funny because we've had this discussion among our group and, and uh, like some people brought up, do you do churches? And, and one of our people, Luke Smith here said, I bought several things from and churches so and we. banks mm -hmm. and those things and too, companies. which we have. So we're not afraid of any, we're, we'll take it. And we're, yeah. we're hopes that too, it's not their thing. They just want to get rid of it. And mm -hmm. often they do. Yeah. We're very liberal data scrubbers. If there's <laughs> any question, I leave it in. I'm looking more, I scrub more for use codes and things like that and specific use property to get that out of there mm -hmm. than I do uh, ownership type. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think the, the things that apply to sending a mailer to do house deal, um, you know, it, it's a completely different data scrub and, and completely different. It's, the process is the same, but how you price it and which properties are vacant and all that matters with houses, but it doesn't matter with any at all with this. Mm -hmm. That's sure. been my experience anyway. Yeah. By the way, Luke Smith is awesome. I heard his interview on your podcast and I was checking out his YouTube channel. It's just like, man, this guy knows what he's doing. This is awesome. Yeah. Like, I, I really look up to him. He's doing a lot of deals and it just seems like he's knocking it out of the park. I'm sure that probably other people are too in your group, but I've just noticed a lot of his stuff. So good job, Luke. He's a self, uh, as of last week, a self-proclaimed sociopath. Yes, he is. He, he cares not about people's <laughs> opinions of, of his, the pricing of how his, his offers go out. Yeah, you get to that his point. He cares about yeah. it a little bit, but I love that because I just think it's a funny, it's in an unhealthy way. I think it's funny to upset. The people think their property is worth a couple million bucks and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's worth a thousand dollars. I think Luke Smith, we should unmute Luke Smith. Let him say hello for a few minutes. Do your parcel fact thing before yeah. we wrap up the call. Luke, will you say hi? I hope he's ready to say hi. He's probably in the bathtub. <laughs> or he's on a call. Hey, there I, he is. I had to find the right button. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luke. I don't know what to tell you. I was, I got like 144 listings created last week and I'm scared to hit publish. It's turning up to the phones and I don't know what to do then. But that was, I bought a lot more properties than that. I just trying to create them all and trying to like add more information, like how far to the hospital and the Home Depot and Walmart and the schools and you know, like a lot of that kind of detail stuff that I think I can set my ads out ahead of, ahead of others with. Oh yeah. And um, so it just, it's a lot of same kinds of properties, right? Like portfolio buys. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are talking about 11 properties in the same neighborhood. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know. Then it's only one posting. That's what's well, nice about it. Well, I was doing different postings. So they're trying to point out like different stuff in these properties um and do different prices depending on the attributes like some are closer to water some look like have views or they're next to a pond or some are on dirt roads some are on paved roads some have like neighbors with power lines and others don't stuff like that um and just trying to like differentiate them all them do these like stupid low monthly payments on them and even though you said not to uh 
but I think I would do a lot of them at like $25 a month wow. for the rest wow. of the year and just see if I can move them in volume. So one of the strategies I'm trying to do, I'm studying like all these different promoters, like these homestead guys, you know, that are, that are setting up their shop and they're making, I like YouTube. I'm just a YouTube guy. So they make all these YouTube videos about what they're doing and they're making and they're creating their place. And I'm like, these guys are talking to people and they're inspiring people that are, that should go out and buy land and do this on their own. And I want to be their, I want to be their like supplier, their friend. Yeah. Their supplier. <laughs> and so like get all these stupid cheap properties. Um, other people I watch woodworking videos, you know, they give away a router like they should be giving away a property to their mm -hmm. subscribers and they promote their channel by, you know, be, be a subscriber, be a Patreon, be a whatever. And I'll give you a piece of land and it's being donated or it's coming from, you know, Luke Smith and his website over here. And he's got a bunch of other ones and you think you can't afford land. Like this guy's got some cheap stuff. Um, you know, make it available to everybody and uh, do it on multiple channels. Cause a lot of those people that watch one, they watch multiple channels. And if they start seeing my stuff in multiple, you know, multiple channels and they're all saying, he's got good stuff. Here he is. You know, um, I think that'd be cool. And so to keep them promoting it, I'm trying to give them like coupon codes so they can, you know, the people that come from those specific channels get a discount. I can track where they're coming from. And the guy that, this is one of my questions before, uh, the guy that creates the channel and gets people to use my coupon code, I want to give him a kickback without being like a real estate agent. Um, yeah. But like a kickback for the referral, not the transaction, some, some wording in there. Maybe I need to get some legal advice there, but. Well, make him an affiliate, I think, right, Seth? Affiliate, there you go. Maybe, that's how it work. I, don't, I wanted to base it on the on the dollar transaction of the, of the deal. Like if they move five properties, you know, they get they get more money than the guy that moves one property. Um, again, if I find one of those channels that does really well compared to the others, um, give them more deals, give them more stuff to give away, promotions, discounts, like go – sweeten it up to their their audience they should get a better audience i promote them on my website you know they promote me i promote them you know give high fives all the way around and people get cheap land and they can use it and hopefully someday i get some of these people that like buy some land from me and go build everything and build it on youtube like the oh, whole that's a good idea. and they say you should get your own land you should go to Luke and you should get it and you should use my discount code. Here's, you know, the creator's name or whatever. Use that when you buy it and you get a discount and um, that stuff will last a long, long time. It's not like going to land watch and paying for the, the, the super la 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 account for $500 a month or something. Right. Um, mm -hmm. that, you're cross, yeah. You're, you're cross marketing. And I, we yeah. did a show about that on Thursday. Instead of paying for those ads, if I sunk that money into land and multiplied it because its value is sought higher than what I'm paying for it in the right audience, you know, multiply that money by giving land away or discounts of some kind to those people. Um, I think it'd be much more beneficial placement of my ad dollars, my promoting my promotion money than paying all these different websites to be posted to get next to everybody else that's got similar properties. And I think you start getting a dichotomy from always being the lowest priced property out there and selling just on price. Eventually over time you could sell on other attributes like the information, the full service of, you know, here it is, here's how it is, here's how other people are doing it. And um, you know, the price doesn't, stops mattering as much as the the main selling point i think selling at price is great to begin with but i think over time you could move beyond just that yeah so that's the idea that's what i'm trying to do that's what that's like the basis of these questions i keep asking 
I think any unique cross marketing, like we did a tiny houses uh, show this Thursday, Jill and I, I think it aired on Thursday today about cross marketing. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Thursday. <laughs> in fact, it might have, Oh, it just got released now okay. just one minute ago. So uh, or an hour ago, but yeah, any cross marketing, I think, you know, tiny houses, the people that buy, want these tiny houses need the land too. Or as crazy as it sounds, we, we sell property like preppers or that's what they're saying they are. So I'm, you know, I, it is what it is. I don't have any opinion about it, but they all love property. That's very rural and very cheap. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Well, as we get, thank you so much, Luke, as we, as we get ready to, um, oh good. I got a couple in here. As we get ready to wrap this up, I want to share and I want to set the C this, this, uh, yeah. the beginning of this new product that we have coming up. It's, it's a parcel fact. And Jack's got a couple, I've got a couple right here, counties and APNs. Let's do this Colorado, well, the Colorado. This is the not even beta version of type in what you want. W-E-L-D. Nice. I don't even know Weld County. I don't either. So, and then F like Frank, 048-0786. Okay, ready? One, it might one be thousand, an owner number. Two, one thousand. Yeah, it's not, it's not, not the okay. right. That's right. an owner number. That's not an APN. All right, let's do another one here. Um, I don't know, Anwar. Oh, La Paz. How about La Paz County? And there's the API. Oh, sweet. Okay. Thanks, Anwar. There we go. Go ahead. Okay. 306-09-010. Okay. Submit. Okay. One, 1,002, 1,000. Why are we having trouble here? Sorry. <laughs> That's why it hasn't been released yet. No. I have, I have another one. Okay, wait a minute. Can you read it to me again? With the dashes, we're going to try this time. Okay. La Paz, mm -hmm. 306 09 010. I haven't even really played with this. I just kind of watched a little bit. No, no that's something's wrong. Something's up with that one. Okay. Yeah. Hold one second here. Um, Kent, what county is yours? Because I've got your APN here. Oh, Kent, is it Weld, Colorado? Okay, go back to Weld and try this number when you're ready. Yep. Okay. Zero five three three zero seven zero 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 two four. I think you might have one more zero in there, but let's try this real quick. Well, which one is it? Is it is I think it's four zeros. Yeah, four zeros. This is like playing bingo. It kind of is. Not that I know about that. There we go. Now we can see how great this thing is. And and it's so awesome. I when I'm we were looking at this the other day. This is what I this one's an easy one because it has four points, but we pulled up a property that had like 19 different actual points on it and it had it perfect. So So this is a pre even pre beta. And so what we've got too, which I love, love are these three shots down here that are meant, you were meant to like right click on them and save the image for the posting. Hmm. So it does a ton of the engineering work where you don't have to take the screenshots and all of that stuff. This is, and when we release it, it'll be way more robust than this. And the data over here, uh, acres range and the whole thing, owner and, and uh, assessed value and all of it, it, there's a ton more data. So, and at some point, we won't release it this way, but it will tie into Landpin. So you just don't have to do the posting. You literally put the county, the state, the APN, and it populates 80% of what, what needs to be there. And then the creative stuff, July will handle. Bingo. And then you just push the button and it pushes it all to the, to the other sites around the country. It's going to uh, be awesome. The other sales, sell sites. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, yeah. It's awesome when it works, and it's good when it gets the right information too. Mm -hmm. So that that little parcel, that square you're seeing, is that pulling that from like the county's GIS database or from some other place? Like, where's that it's, data come from? It's pulling from a massive database that CoreLogic created um, okay. called Parcel. What's it? Parcel something. Is it Parcel Point? Parcel Point. But we CoreLogic have... has a database that they've been working on forever. It's got 148, 47 million properties in it. Mm -hmm. And it's constantly updated. So it literally is pulling from that database and we are licensed providers. 
just Ooh. like we are with RealQuest. So it's another core logic product. And we'll be adding list source and a comp and a product called Real List, which is usually for um, it, it ties into the uh, the uh, MLSs. So mm -hmm. theoretically, you can get MLS access to every MLS in the country without being an agent. Man, so there's some cool stuff coming. You know, we're on CoreLogic's real good side because as a group, we're pulling hundreds of thousands of records every month and they mm -hmm. just love that. That's their business model is to not deal with the end user like we do mm -hmm. and to just deal with people like us who are like mm -hmm. licensed resellers. Yeah. It's like, and they don't, they only do it based on usage. So mm -hmm. it's cool. Yeah, we're ever, so I mean, lucky. Whenever you get this thing up and running, if you ever want me to do a video review or something like that for the blog, yeah. I'd be happy to. It seems super oh, yeah. cool. cool. Yeah, we're so excited. They have like set. right now, huge. right now they've given us back end access to the faucet, and it's yeah, like we call it the fire hose. We're like, what the <laughs> heck? And we're trying to figure out what all we want to use it for and how to how to present it. And and I'm just so darn excited. There's a lot of high fiving in this in our office the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, let's wrap up with this too. Okay, so I. This is one of the cool things about CoreLogic. I, uh, at our meeting, when we left our meeting a couple weeks ago, I asked them, hey, I want to do a big, a big fly people into town event. Could you guys show up and do some actual, like CoreLogic people show up and do some training and help us with some stuff? And they said, heck yeah. Yeah. So I've got them in my pack pocket. The, eight, the title 24-7 people are going to come to. Yep. The and so... So Seth, um, how's your November schedule look? Can we talk a little later and maybe get yeah. you to fly out to LA? Sure, sounds like okay, fun. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> awesome. That's All right, answer. that is. We did a little meetup yesterday. I don't know, ten or twenty people, twenty, thirty people were there, and mm -hmm. and it was a blast. It's so I much think fun. They got a lot out of it, and uh, you know, we found out again. We find out what where the issues are, where the uh, newer people, newer land investors are having issues. And we just we keep developing so products for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. sure. That's good stuff. Well, thank you very much. And so happy to have you, Seth. And I will, mm. uh, I'm going to talk to you more later about that. And so everybody, you heard it here. We're going to put together, we, Jack, Jack and I started to do some little things to kind of test the water and get our, and get some comfortable and come up with some good topics and things. So we're going to, we're going to push and I'm looking at the end of this year, maybe like November, we'll have a big, it'll be yeah. worth flying on an airplane come to an event especially in november from michigan yes yeah, I mean, I, I'd be a time to get out of here <laughs> <laughs> exactly so thanks great. again seth williams of reitipster.com is a super treat as always you bet thanks guys appreciate it see you next week everyone thank you thanks. see ya